How we feel about that pick? They seem kind of fired up. I don't even know who it is. No, I don't know. No. Uh, he doesn't have any ties to us. I don't, no, Pittsburgh. I don't think so. No, I, no, I don't know his dad or anything. Yeah, no, no. no. <laughs> well, if you haven't seen, uh, Joey Porter Jr. has just got drafted to the Pittsburgh Steelers. That makes you feel old, though. Yeah, Joey it Porter does make Jr. You so just got drafted. I by never the played with Joey, first of all, but I, some people like to say that that's like a, you know, I'm not that old yet, okay? I would have had a Super Bowl by now. But, um, you know, I got to play against Joey when he was with uh, the Cardinals. Um, but I'm excited about this pick, man. Uh, not just because it's Joey's son, it's because Joey Porter Jr. is a heck of a player. Uh, love his length. Um, love how he can run with almost every wide receiver. It's a, it's a good pick for us. I think it's also a guy that you thought you might have to get in the first round. You got yeah. him in the second, so really good value, too. Surprising right? he yeah. was there in the second, man. Mm -hmm. I, I did not think uh, we were going to be able to wait this long to get a guy like that. Uh, we'll get more of our, our coverage and our draft uh, expertise as the night goes on, but we have a special guest, someone who really breaks down tape now. Uh, he's a scout for us. He's draft, he was drafted by the Pittsburgh Steelers. Let's give it up for Merrill Hodge. have the guru on the draft right. guru. how are you how, how are we we I'm are Steeler great. nation out there oh come on y'all can do better than that yeah you can do better than that it's a full house we got to get louder than that so Merrill you're in a different role now I am how does it I feel am. to be working with the Pittsburgh Steelers as opposed to just you know playing for them yeah <laughs> well you know um uh, that, that's actually an interesting perspective and um, something I actually shared with the entire organization here about two days ago. Um, most fans won't know this, but the Steelers put together the day before the draft to have the entire organization come in. When I say the entire organization, the entire organization. Equipment managers, athletic trainers, everybody. Secretaries, because everybody's a part of this journey. Our O started off, he didn't talk about a couple minutes. Mike talked for a couple of minutes. Omar talked for a couple of minutes. Mm -hmm. And it was in the conversation when they were talking that it just dawned on me that like, I've been outside those walls. I've been inside the walls for about a decade. But then I've been outside those walls for some two decades. I, you know, I, I covered the draft and I did stuff getting ready to do the draft for some 20 years. And I spent a lot of time in meetings where we go through every team, we go through the draft just like teams do the best we can. But every time the Pittsburgh Steelers come up, they always revisit these things. First of all, the, the history of ownership. Mm -hmm. So in 1987, I was drafted. The Chief was still alive. Um, and I got to meet the Chief. And I have a lot of experiences with the Chief, even though he passed away the following year. Then the majority of my career, I played for Mr. Rooney. But I grew up with Art and Dan Rooney Jr., who's the vice president. Um, played for Chuck Knoll, and I played for Bill Cowher. Give it up. Give it up. Yeah. And now I'm working with Mike Tomlin, who the first two are Hall of Famers. The third one's probably going to be a Hall of Famer. Right. But the point in sharing it with them is the importance of what they meant to that organization and what that organization, how people look at that organization. And I mean everybody. Everybody's looking in at the Pittsburgh Steelers because they are the standard from ownership and coaching and how they've been successful. And people are trying to model that. Now, some just will never be able to do it because they can't help themselves. <laughs> <laughs> Which we could get into. You want to get some we could, we could go into that. Name names. Name names. But everybody, everybody idolizes that. Everybody respects that. Everybody talks about that. And I just want them to know that, that outside these walls, that's what they're saying. Mm -hmm. And it was um, just, it, was, it just hit me. I was like, oh, my gosh. The, I would have never known that had I left it. Yeah. And being outside it for some 25 years, I was like, they need to know it. Uh, and that includes the fans. I mean, let me tell you this, that it, you are part of what makes Steeler great, Steeler, the Steeler organization great. 
yeah. is the fans and Steeler Nation, and, and they're, pa they're talked about too. So we got to get you right into the scouting role okay. right now. Yeah, let's go to it. We just saw Will Levis get drafted. How do you feel about that for the Tennessee Titans? Well, <clears throat> um, Last year, they, you know, they fired their general manager. Mm -hmm. Now, a lot of people think they did it because of A.J. Brown. Right. But what they, did to them, what they did as far as the backup quarterback, which this tells you right now that they made a mistake last year. <laughs> that, 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 that kid just doesn't have a skill set to play in the NFL. He, he just, the kid from Liberty, he just doesn't. Now, Will Levis is not much better from this perspective. Um, you'll appreciate this. You play against quarterbacks. I'll give you a quarterback that has these two things. He's accurate and he's decisive and he has pocket presence. Okay, so that's Joe Burrow. Mm -hmm. How hard are they to play? Very hard. Very hard. <laughs> then you play a quarterback that really not a good processor and he's not really accurate. Completely different game or doesn't have good pocket presence. All of that matters in our league. Yeah. Just one of those things will drive you out of the league. Now, the thing that is a concern that he had in Kentucky, he's not a real good processor of things and he's not very accurate mm. he's very erratic um, in all a areas of football those are disturbing but the thing that's probably the, the the most troubling he has no pocket awareness like there's no like he has no real feel for playing the game now right. they've talked about well he had all these sacks I will tell you this half of those sacks were on him I do believe that a lot of quarterbacks We'll, and, we'll put you in a bad position. And they, ne they never, ever get called out. You know, it's like, oh, the tackle made a mistake. No, 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 no. Their pocket was clean. Somebody wandered over into traffic and got himself in trouble. Yeah. And he did that a lot. Mm -hmm. And just so when you look at those things, like how, first of all, you can't change accuracy. You are who you are. Mm. People think they can be fixed. That's never been fixed. You get cleaned up a little bit, but you'll never be truly accurate. And he's just not accurate enough in our league. Um, his overall feel for the game or the position, he struggles with that. Um, now, what they're going to do, obviously, in Tennessee, what they're thinking is this giving him some time to develop, yeah. which is clearly the best environment that he could go into. In all fairness, now, where he went is a blessing to him uh -huh. versus being a first-rounder. Well, you know, you know the pressure of a first-rounder. Um, when you came in the league, watching your development from where you were to where you were to where you are, is extraordinary <laughs> to watch you, you know, because I've watched you from, you know, coming in because I, you know, you're, you, your dad and I have a, a little bit of history together. I don't know if I've ever shared this no, with you. No, you haven't. Um, I thought I actually told you about this because it was one of the things I was going to bring up to you. Uh, when your dad was in Chicago, mm -hmm. he had just went to Chicago, I believe from New Orleans. Yeah. I became a free agent the next year and the 49ers had tried to trade for me during the season. Mm -hmm. and so I thought that's where I was going to end up. Well, two days before free agency, the Bears called. And they're like, and I'm like, well, you, got, you just got Ironhead. Well, why would you want me? And they're like, no, we, we, wanted, we want to change our offense and be more versatile. Like, your dad was like a, a power guy. Actually, yeah. he should have probably come over here, to be honest <laughs> with you. I mean, because that, that, yeah. Jerome came in here when I left. Right. Um, and then the rest is history with the bus fit perfectly with him. And your dad was, you know, a power guy like that. And so when they signed me I'm going in he was working out your dad was working out in the gym yeah and I'm like how uncomfortable is this I, I'm gonna walk into the, <laughs> I'm gonna walk into the workout with Ironhead who they're gonna let go tomorrow wow. it was the most so we were teammates for about a day <laughs> we were teammates for about a day but I loved your dad I had just great respect for your dad because I was, when he was at Pitt I was a fan of his um and so we were Teammates, wow. in a way, in Chicago. Um, you never for, told me that. Yeah, for for a split second, you we were we were teammates. That. So then, obviously, when you came to the Steelers, I'm, you know, I was I wanted to I had. You feel like you have a connection. Like I wanted to really watch you, you know, based on what happened to your dad, and um, just knowing how proud your dad would have been of you, and I, and even was I know when you, when you played, but then to watch you evolve as a player was. I mean, you do some things now that are just ridiculous. I, I, I do some playbooks every now and then. <laughs> I could do a playbook actually every week because you always have that one play where you just absolutely annihilate somebody from a fundamental aspect. If you want to talk about teaching the game, you would use you as a great example. Appreciate but to watch that. you move, going back to what I was saying, like when you first came in here, people probably wanted you to get 12 sacks and, you know, completely dominant. And you're like, oh, my gosh, you know, yeah. like expectation. Yeah. 
you know, is so it, unfair. It, it, it's it's tough for the first rounder. Yeah, there's a lot that goes in on that. Right. So he, he gets a break from that, and then that's a blessing. He may not think it, and sitting like he sat yesterday, that's, that's got to be brutal. Mm -hmm. But the best thing that ever happened to him to have a shot, yeah, is that. Okay, so let's dive right into the Steelers' first round pick, and then the second round pick. Yeah. How do you feel about those? Well, you know, like, you know, you know Solomon Wilcox. Solomon yeah. Wilcox, good friend of mine. So we we always go back and forth on stuff, and he was saying, yeah. He goes, who do, you, who do you think they should have really picked? Now, from a perspective of how our, you know, the Steelers were looking at things, that was the best tackle. Mm. He was the best tackle. Um, even though, you know, like, I've used this too, like, beauty is in the eye of the beholder. Talent is in the eye of the beholder too. Mm. You know, people look at things differently. That's why those other two guys went. Wait, the before. fans aren't excited enough that he just said, that is the best tackle. Come on, guys. Let's let's give it up for that. Got the guy they wanted. I mean, that's yeah. yeah. But he was the best tackle, um, and fundamentally, he's good from feet, hips to hands. Okay, you know how important that is. Mm -hmm. In all, I don't care what your position is. So anybody that I look at, feet, hips to hands, I start there. Or even if it's a quarterback, feet, hips to hands. How how well did they play? How fundamentally good are they? Um, and he's really good. Mm -hmm. He has an enormous. Way, you know, Friar Muth. I remember when he was coming out of Penn State, I'm like, you know what? He is so good, feet, hips to hands, but there's so much growth mm -hmm. that he will get better when he yes. starts developing and a better quarterback, different learning things. This, this guy will be, has, real, has the skill set right now that transitions to our league and has the chance to, be, to evolve to be a dominant left mm -hmm. tackle. And that That's is awesome. a game changer. Um, it's not exciting for fans, you know, I know. <laughs> because you're know, going back to Solomon, he, would, he said he was hoping that the Steelers would have drafted the, the wide receiver from Ohio State. Oh, yeah. Oh. Um, and I was like, well, <clears throat> you, you can't fix, you know, you, you just don't. Have, that's what the draft and building a team, I think, is, um, is an art. Mm -hmm. And if you think about um, this league and being consistent, like, your torrential warfare, I say this every time, the Super Bowl gets over every year, first of all, the best team wins, okay? Not right. the best quarterback, not the best defense, the best team wins. And I'm telling you, 100% of the time, the team that wins, their offensive line played the best and their yes. defensive line played the best. And you could probably get the MVP from there, but they never get any credit <laughs> there. They'll never get it. They'll never get it, but that's, you could start right there. Don't tell me that. I'm going for the MVP in the Super Bowl. You could probably get it. Well, the you, offensive that, lineman ain't getting it. Well, as long, if you show up in the backfield long enough, I'm trying to think the last guy to do that was probably Richard Dent. Well, Von, Von Miller oh, no, showed no, I'm sorry. Yeah. Take that back. But what did he do? He was in the backfield all day. All that, day. That's what you have to do. Yes. And now you can do that from that perspective, and you're going to get I think like Von Miller and Richard Dent, I can't think of. It's not a lot. <laughs> so go through Joey, Joey Porter Jr. and what you think about him. Okay. Now, here, here's what I'll tell you about where he stood as a, as a grade. We, I mean, he's a first-round grade. Mm. People have him as a first-round grade. Um, yeah. We have great th – there was like three corners – few of those guys those other guys went before Joey um, but he was in the top and then our top first first round um, mm -hmm. echelon so in a way we, we really get fortunate from a perspective like if you think of a value like okay we've had if you haven't ranked in the first round you get him in the second you get that's fortunate mm. um, he does a lot of things that um, that you like to have to do in our league. Like, the way he plays man, like, okay, he can get better at man just from how he uses his hands. Right. You know, so many defensive backs are good with their feet, which he is, and they fail to use their second best weapon, their hands. You know, I've always, always cracks me up when they're, they're pressed like this, and they ball snap, and they stay there. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you, know, you got to use those hands, but you can teach those things. You can, yeah. And he has a chance to really blossom with development, but he is um, – He's somebody, I will promise you this, in the second round, they probably weren't thinking. It would be like Kenny Pickett. Yeah. There's no way during the draft last year you thought Kenny Pickett was going to fall to the Steelers. I thought, but how many people thought we were going to get Kenny Pickett? Now, come on, be honest. <laughs> yeah. He wasn't getting to 20. I didn't think he was getting to 20. No, I, I'm telling you, there's, I, there was like five teams you would have thought. Anyway, I, I, I didn't think he... So, Merrill, I do want to ask you about a guy who's currently playing and plays in the division. Lamar Jackson just signed an extension. Yep. How do you feel about that, and how do you rate his play, or how do you scout his play? Well, 
I, I, you know what's interesting about that question? You said, how do I scout his play? So I can only scout the offense they run. Mm. So yeah. the offense they run are the Baltimore Raven coaches saying, this is what our guy does the best. Okay, so that's not me. That is not anybody else. There's a reason that they run the ball in the way they run it. There's a reason they throw the football the way they throw off of it. Mm -hmm. That's what he does well. Right. He has not evolved off of that. He didn't do it at Louisville. And at times he's been forced into kind of a pro style system. He, mm -hmm. he, does, he just doesn't do that very well. That is not his strength. Right. And people will take it as a, you're attacking the guy. No, I'm not. That's what they run. Right. I'm not even, I'm not telling, I'm not saying, you know what, I'm not telling you what they run. I'm just telling you, they run what they run for a reason. Mm -hmm. They hide their quarterback in a system that he functions well in. Now, at some point, he, they get exposed and they can't do that. And then they've got to throw it in a traditional set, which is the interesting point to me is that that's the system they're going to do now. I think one of the hardest things, I don't know how you're, when you, I don't know if you've changed defensive schemes and systems here we much. We have. Okay. A, a little bit. You know, when we were with Coach LeBeau, more 3-4. Okay. Uh, we've yeah, evolved over coach. time and, you know, brought in the 4-3 a lot more. But, okay. you know, and, and it's a mixture, it's a hybrid. And so one, from an offensive perspective, I, I, I think it's the same with defense. When you change systems and get new quarterback, coordinators and new coaches, if you do that too much, that is, I think that's the kiss of death in anybody's career. I don't care if it's mm. offense or defense. I mean, you look at some of the greatest offenses, greatest quarterbacks. You take Tom Brady, I think of Troy Aikman, Terry Bradshaw when he, he was here. And this is actually maybe a credit to Ben is all the systems that he's kind of went through yeah. and still have been able to win and mm -hmm. be successful. That's usually hard. Yeah. Usually, especially on you, I use his quarterback. I mean, um, oh, he'll come up in a second. The quarterback um, Tom Brady filled in for. Um, Drew Bledsoe. Drew Bledsoe. Okay, Drew Bledsoe's whole career was that. New coach, new coordinator. New coach, new <laughs> coordinator. And he yeah. never got settled in. Right. You know, I mean, I've had this conversation with Troy Aikman and a lot of quarterbacks. Troy's like, man, if I had ever. Well, actually, they did once. North Turner left. Oh, yeah. The second that we started twitch, switching things, he goes, it ruined my career. So... What will be interesting, you're going to have a new coordinator. You're going to have new wide receivers. You're going to have new learning. Mm. I just, I, I think it votes well for the, our division <laughs> and how we want to play. <laughs> but I, if you're going to take him out of his most comfort zone and how they've been successful, and you're now you're saying, well, we're just going to be more of a pro-style offense, I, I, I think it's a recipe for disaster there. I say Cam has always been a big component of giving Lamar the money. He was always said oh, that. I think any He's player, always oh, said that. I'm yeah, always, listen, he, he already, well, tell that. well, I'm selfish. Tell yeah. I'm selfish. I want them to eat up the cap with the quarterback, and then they can't play, pay anybody else. Well, and then <laughs> yeah, they, they've kind of done that. That's why they, you get a rookie quarter a, yes. a receiver because now that you, is your window. Yeah, there's you. You got guys that you could. But see now, look at that. You got that guy who's never played down in the National Football League, so he's got to learn. <laughs> you got the other, I mean, what's his name who came over? I mean, um, he's oh, on the down cycle. Odell Beckham. Odell Beckham. But, and just because you play, like, just because you've played in this league doesn't mean that you know how to play with the Ravens. And right. People forget that. Like, when I went to Chicago, you know, even though I've been in the league for almost 10 years, I'm like, every, where do we eat? Where's our meetings? I mean, <laughs> what's our system? I mean, everything is, like, yeah. new to me. And I'm like, that, that takes some time. And Scheme and fit. So it'll be interesting to see how. Yeah, I don't think any player's ever against a player. I mean, from his perspective, you done right. He earned it. I have no problem with that. But now you're married to that, right? And you you got to make it you, work. You got to make it work. And then then the way they're going about it is just very surprising to me because he has not functioned in an environment like that. He's already been in those positions and he's yeah. he struggles in them. So yeah. So you bring up scheme and fit. Uh, we see these quarterbacks taken. Uh, you have. Bryce Young, C.J. Stroud, now Will Levis, and Anthony Richardson. Who was in the best, who's in the best situation for them to have success? Mm. No, the guy I think, I, I think is the absolute best was C.J. Stroud. Mm. C.J. Stroud, but, and I don't even, and it, the other guy that's, I think, in second place would be Bryce Young. Mm. Now, I talked about, like, decision-making and, um, decision and accuracy, like those two are woven together. Right. Um, both are outstanding there. 
pocket presence, outstanding there. So they have all of really the, the skill set, the transitions from college to the NFL. But now if you start building on that aspect of it, this yeah. is where the difference comes. So in our league, um, and you know this, that most quarterbacks have to throw from a dirty pocket. Right. You know, that there's more congestion than that exists in the NFL. If you looked at that environment, and this, listen, I'm not saying it's easy in Ohio State and Alabama no. because they are so dominant, they don't get into that a lot. So you have to do a lot of work. But when you do put those plays together, Bryce Young, no matter how hard he works out, I don't know how long he trains, he is never going to grow to 6'2". Mm -hmm. He is always going to be 5'10", and that's going to be a problem from finding passing lanes traditionally right. in our league. When he is forced in that environment, he doesn't function as well. It's mm -hmm. hard for him to throw the football. He is more limited. He doesn't have the arm strength that um, CJ does. So he doesn't, he can't really threaten the field yeah. when that pocket is collapsing. Yeah. Now, CJ Stroud, laser like that Georgia game. Is an example. You know what? Laser like accuracy, and he can put that, he can hit that exit sign right here 10 out of 10 <laughs> times. He can hit that, you know, that bandstand over there at 25 yards from a clouded pocket right. with authority. And there's from a defensive perspective, so now I have to worry about the entire, every inch of the field, whereas Bryce Young, once I collapse that pocket, I gotta just worry about this little rainbow of areas that he can throw the football. Right. So from that perspective, he will create limitations for you. So, so from a designer and offensive guy, I mean, I gotta really worry about that. Or I got to deal with it, whereas CJ, I do not. And I'm like, I would much rather deal with a guy I don't have to, I have no limitations on. Right. So that's why I like him better. I think Bryce will be a very good quarterback. Those limitations will rear their ugly, ugly heads enough. And here's where they're going to rear their ugly head when it matters mm. in big games. And that's, mm. I just, that's why I would have taken CJ Stroud over, over Bryce Young. A couple minutes left. I want to ask you, we have a segment called Regret It, Regret it or Not. Um, what's one evaluation you would regret you gave to a player? And what's one you, you would regret giving a, a bad evaluation to? Well, it was the one that I'll always regret <laughs> just because I didn't do the one thing that I did before and it taught me I will never not do again. We were actually doing the draft, and I'm trying to come up with his name right now. You'll, you'll, you'll be able to help because he, he works on the NFL Network now. He was a running back, and he came out of um, – Jones Drew? Yeah, James uh, – yes. Maurice, Good call. That was Maurice quick. Jones Drew. Maurice, Maurice Jones Drew. UCLA. <laughs> yeah, Thank absolutely. you. Okay, so he comes out of UCLA, and it's around – I think he gets drafted in the third round or so, so we're doing the draft. We're at the commercial break, and they're like, um, hey, there's the guy from UCLA, they're gonna, Jacksonville's going to take – maybe it was the second round. So it was a little earlier than most expected. I watched no tape on him. And then I'm like, well, you know, um, why don't you give me his statistics and his measurements? And he's like 5'10", 205 or something like that. And I'm like, oh, he's a third down back, you know. But having just using measurables and using statistics mm. and using size. Right. I didn't watch an ounce of tape on him. I know nothing about him as a football player. Well, um, <laughs> he is nothing like that. And he's like a fire hydrant. He, you know, <laughs> he's like rookie of the year, destroys. Right. So in the Super Bowl, Every year, I used to play in the direct, direct TV flag football game. Yeah. Well, one um, year, I'm in the green room, and I could feel there's two guys that have officials, I mean, like if they were officiating the game. Mm -hmm. And they kept staring at me, and I'm like, oh, that's Maurice Jones Drew. <laughs> so this is like five years later, right? So, and he's already, you know, he's been a couple Pro Bowls, and he's like, had 1,200 yards rushing, 1,300 yards rushing, smashing people. And I'm like, I'm feeling uncomfortable, and here he comes, and I'm like, he said, Merrill. I said, I, said, I, said, I, even, I said, listen, you, wherever you're going with this, I'm sorry. <laughs> I, am, I was 100% wrong. Like I said, in fact, you taught me a lesson. After I did that to you and then I saw you, I'd never, if somebody would have done that now on television, go, hey, talk about this guy, and I've never seen tape on him, I will not talk about him. I will say nothing about him because I have no right to do that because I can't really tell you the truth about the player. And, and he was doing this in a joking way. Right, but I was like, you taught me a lesson. He goes, well, just so you know, I'm watching television. Everybody's killing me. And I go, the one guy that's not gonna kill me is gonna be you. And they come out of commercial break and you kill me. <laughs> he goes, you played the position. I was like, ah, no. Maurice, I tell you, I, I will never forget you. I go, you taught me never, ever do that again. 
Well, Meryl, I want to say thank you so much oh, my for coming pleasure, on. man. Anytime for you, We got brother. some special stuff to give away. We we heard that you tie ties pretty good. Is that oh, right? Yeah, I can do. I can throw tie. I can throw tie. You want to throw no, some ties outside? We, 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 sign some ties. Yeah, and, let's sign some ties and tie some ties, yeah. right? <laughs> so we're going to sign them and tie them. You could just sign them. You don't have to tie them unless well, we, you we really got, want we got, to. We got to do one tie. Okay, yeah, he's gonna he's, he's gonna tie the, one. He's got his patent and he does it a certain way. I, think I know. Can you just tie all my ties? Yeah. Oh my gosh, this is funny. I love this. Meryl, I, I, we have to get Meryl on again because there's more questions well, we have yeah, to ask. And I it's would just, say there was something I would have liked to ask him a little further along, but how away. many analysts do you think are not watching film and they're just going off the measurables? Because Cam last um, night was getting very... Probably about 90%. <laughs> he was very frustrated last night watching people talk oh. about players, and he was very angry. Pro so. well, let, let me Look just say best. this. There's probably about 90%, and then just because they're watching tape, which you'll appreciate this, doesn't mean they know what they're watching. Facts. That, that, that's Facts. another thing. Like, people could sit there and go, oh, I'm watching the Steelers play a 3-4 and or watching them play defense, and they can't even tell you what a 4-3 or a 3-4 is. Then when you go, are they an over and under, they're like, what? And as soon as they <laughs> say that, you're like, and you're watching their defense. Yes. And you're going to tell me that you know what they're doing? Oh. Get the heck out of here. Yeah. Wow. That's he, not even fair. He broke down some film and said that a lot of scouts don't know what bad O-line and bad D-line play are. And, no. And yeah, they he, don't even understand blitzes, so... They'll just That's say, oh, that, that guy's going inside, so he must have done a move. Mm -hmm. And it's not a move. It's just it's a stunt. I'm with you. I, I've been for a long time. Guys, yeah. we're getting the, the talk about football as he's tying the tie. I know, this, this is, is impressive because I need to look it up on YouTube how to tie a tie. So I, you know. What do you call this knot? You know what? I knew you were going to ask me that, okay? <laughs> <laughs> this, is a, this is actually a true story. So the New York Times came in and did a, a, a feature on me tying a tie yeah. when I was at ESPN. And they go, what's that called? <laughs> And I said, I don't know. I go, my dad taught me how to tie this tie when I was about eight years old because I had to wear a tie to church. I learned how to tie it that way. I've never, I never asked, and I, I have no idea. Let's call it the Merrill. I, 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 so I, well, I called it the Haji Knot. The, uh, Haji we call it the Haji too. Knot. That's good. <laughs> I don't know exactly what it actually is called, though, Mark, to be honest with you. All right. Throw those out there. Let's give a round of applause for Merrill. Got a Merrill Haas jersey right here on the we front, did it. too. So we'll just we'll throw it out there. There you go. There we go. I expect to see you guys wearing that right now. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, this is fun. Now, how long are you guys going to be doing this? How, let me ask some We're questions. We're here the whole night. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. We're, We're going to hear the whole night. We, we oh got another special God. guest coming through. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm sure you got all kinds of. We had Kenny on. We had Broderick on. Um, Pat. Oh, we had Pat Fryermuth on. Mm -hmm. Oh, shoot. You have all the big guys. All well, the we got you. Yeah. <laughs> I'm a filler. I'm filler. No, no. Everybody wants to hear from everybody. No, we well, need, uh, I'm glad we got to talk about your dad, though, because I've always, um, I, I, I just, I was, I had a great respect for him. Oh, you don't have to tie that. We can throw yeah, that out. Yeah, yeah, we throw this yeah. Don't make him tie it again. All right. <laughs> we'll see. Hard to throw a tie. Yeah, so the ties don't fly very far. They so sure don't, closer man. It's the like they, they, they sprout wings as you're, as they're sending, you're sending them off. So you guys going th through the whole draft till 11? Yes, sir. 11. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, it's, we're gonna hopefully be. Hey, now tell me, tell me. Since somebody said you guys were best friends in high school. Best well, friends in high school. Hey, we want to awesome. thank the Steelers yeah. Shop Cam for all the great giveaways tonight too. Steelers yeah, yeah. Shop has played a big role in this, so thank you, Steelers Shop. Thank really you so it. much. Thank you guys. And thanks then, for. Uh, yeah, thank you, Mayor. DJ PC. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. Thank you. Appreciate it. Be good, brother.